we have this very diverse community. Which, what is it that connects all of those very different Muslims? Not sharing a common language, you know, not sharing a common you know, nationality. What is it that unites that community? And the first and most important thing that Muslims believe is to simply worship of God. Islam is fundamentally a monotheistic faith. Just very, very similar to Judaism, right? At its core, a monotheistic tradition. So when we talk about what do Muslims believe in, Muslims believe in God, capital G, God. And Muslims believe that they are worshiping the same God that created Adam and Eve. Muslims believe they're worshiping the same God that spoke to Moses from the burning bush. So another way of saying that is that Muslims believe that Jews, Christians, and Muslims are all worshiping the same God. I mean, there are others, you know, from other faith traditions who might disagree with that. But from the Muslim perspective, right, you know, there's only one God. And if we're worshiping, you know, that one God, we're all worshiping the same God, Judaism, Christianity. Even if we look at Hinduism, right? Ask any Hindus, right? They will tell you Hinduism is a monotheistic tradition. These are connections that unite us with many, many different communities of faith around the world. And Allah is just the Arabic word for God, right? Muslims don't believe it's something else. Capital G, God, is what Muslims believe in. Uh, Muslims believe in angels and prophets. So Muslims do believe that God sent different messengers to human communities throughout time, right? And again, this is something that unites us uh, as communities of, of faith certainly within Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, because Muslims believe in all of the prophets that are mentioned in the Torah and the Christian Bible. And Muslims also believe, right, in an extra prophet that Jews and Christians, of course, don't believe in. Muslims believe that the prophet Muhammad was the last of the prophets sent to humanity to remind us, you know, the humanity that we should be worshiping God and, you know, taking care of people, you know, serving the people around us. But Muslims also believe that the prophet Muhammad brought a new faith practice the practice of Islam. And of course, you know, he is the most important to the Muslim community. The Prophet Muhammad is the most important prophet in this line of prophethood. And of course, you know, this, the, the, the chart or the, the family tree you can see here shows, again, the connection. We call Judaism, Christianity, and Islam the Abrahamic faith because each of the founders of these traditions have, you know, had a common ancestor in that prophet Abraham. Prophet Muhammad was born in the city of Mecca in the Arabian Peninsula in 570 A.D., you know, 600 years or so after Jesus lived and preached, Muslims believe in 610 AD is when he began receiving revelation from God. If we look back to the 6th and 7th centuries, maybe, you know, if you were going to travel from, say, Jerusalem to the city of Mecca in Arabia, that would have been about a two to three month journey, right? So separated a little bit geographically as well. Muslims believe he preached for about 23 years, preaching monotheism, right? Preaching, preaching righteous uh, actions taking care of people, serving the poor, you know, uh, feeding the hungry and so on and so forth. And then he also, he died in the year 632 AD at the, you know, back in those days, the ripe old age of about 62 or 63 years old. Muslims believe in, uh, in holy books. The most important book that Muslims look to for guidance is the Quran. And you'll see many different spellings for Quran in English, um, Q-U-A-R-A-N or K-O-R-A-N. Uh, we're not really picky about spelling. What Muslims believe about this text, this is the revelation that was given to the Prophet Muhammad. Muslims believe God delivered these verses to the Prophet Muhammad, and then Muhammad simply recited them verbatim as he received them. So Muslims don't believe the Prophet Muhammad wrote the Quran or edited it or anything like that. Muslims believe the Quran to be a form of direct revelation. So literally God's speech to humanity in the Arabic language. And as I kind of said earlier, not all Muslims speak Arabic but all Muslims will do their best to learn some Arabic. Um, ideally enough so that, you know, they can read the Quran in the original Arabic language. Muslims also believe in a day of judgment, right? Muslims do believe in this notion of an afterlife and that each individual will be held accountable for their deeds and that each individual also will be rewarded or punished in the afterlife, you know, for how they live their lives. And Muslims also believe in the, the idea of divine decree, which is simply God is omnipotent and omniscient, right? And many other things as well, but ultimately Muslims trust that God is in charge of everything. Muslims believe very much in this idea of works, works as an obligation of the faith. Not only that, but again, Muslims believe in a loving, merciful God so that we, human beings, should ourselves be loving and merciful to other people and, and to the environment and animals and so on and so forth around us, right? And so we very consciously refer to these as the five pillars of Islam, because Muslims understand these, again, to be kind of supporting uh, the individual's faith journey and faith practice. The first of these five pillars of Islam is simply the statement or the belief that there is no God but God and Muhammad is the messenger of God. And this, by the way, is also how a person converts to Islam. Islam 
and the Muslim community have very open doors. So, I mean, it's very easy to become a Muslim, I would say. So if a person believes in that stuff, reciting this testimony of faith, there's no God but God, and Muhammad is the messenger of God in front of Muslim witnesses, makes a person a part of that Muslim community, right? Makes a person sort of publicly a Muslim. Of course, beyond that, a person should try to learn as much as they can about the faith. If you ask any Muslim scholar today, what's the most important thing that a Muslim should be doing? They will tell you the most important thing a Muslim should be doing is praying, uh, worshiping God, right, through these five daily prayers. So Muslims believe that they should, each individual Muslim is responsible and obligated to pray five times a day, every day. Those five daily prayers are spread out more or less equally throughout the day. So dawn, noon, mid-afternoon, right after sunset, and in the evening. So for us here in Minnesota, because we're very far north of the equator and day length changes quite a bit, right, from season to season. So just for example, you know, sunset, of course, is 9 o'clock p.m. here in, you know, the Minneapolis area. In the wintertime, sunset around Christmas time, sunset is 4.30, right? So you can see the clock times will vary quite a bit from season to season, maybe even a couple minutes from day to day. When Muslims pray, it's very much a physical process as well as a spiritual one. So Muslims do pray uh, with their bodies as well as with their hearts. So you can see here, this is my friend Muhammad. He's praying inside of a mosque here in North Minneapolis. So you can see he's standing and bowing. And he's prostrating. He's placing his face right down to the ground and he's kneeling. So going through this process, you know, physically, as he's reciting some verses from the Quran in Arabic, it takes about five minutes or so to do the, each of these five daily prayers. Five times a day, five minutes. So about 20 to 25 minutes a day where a practicing Muslim is engaged in, you know, intentional, maybe um, mindfulness or meditation, you know, or worship, however we want to express that. So many Muslims, even though it is a challenge, find a lot of peace in these few moments. So in this prayer space, you can see there's no furniture. It's a physical process, so there's no pews or chairs or anything to interfere with the movements that Muslims are making. And when Muslims gather to pray in a group or a congregation, Muslims do it quite literally connected, standing shoulder to shoulder, foot to foot, uh, in rows, going through those motions in unison, connecting us ourselves right with other people you know, in that shared prayer space but also connecting you know, with God, with other believers, with the cosmos, with the, the, the earth around us, those connections and those relationships that are so important to our you know, human health and happiness, as well as, right, of course, creating a better world around us. Right? It's those relationships we create that help us work together, again, to seek justice and create a more just environment for everyone, which is why we have a picture in this one. You can see Masjid al Nur, which is a mosque in North Minneapolis. They have deep, deep connections with that African and African-American tradition of Islam in this country because the community was created by a largely a majority African-American congregation. But also Masjid al Nur really lives out those ideals of service and justice. They have uh, many, many different services that they provide to the local community in North Minneapolis, regardless of background, right? They don't care if a person's Muslim or not. Right. They don't none of that stuff. It's just they just help people who need help. And they do have uh, relationships with local churches and synagogues. They actually collaborate with other houses of worship to better serve the community around them.